So let me. This is the question, right? This is the question. OK, now. The way to solve this is using nodal again. This is a different way you can use nodal. So we will determine that this node over here. This node, OK, has a voltage of V. OK, we're going to call this voltage V. Again, we simply first thing we did was we simplified R34 here. OK, you don't have to necessarily do that. You can keep it in the same way it is. However, I recommend to simplify it to make it easier to solve. Yeah, and you can simply simplify this directly in the equation when you're doing nodal, but I, I prefer me personally, I prefer to reduce it to make it a bit straightforward for me. With more practice, you're going to keep it the same way it is and you can just simplify it within the same equation. So the proper way of doing nodal is, first of all, we're going to look at the node and we're going to do KCL. And then. So. The way this is going to be done is we have the current I1 leaving. We have the current I2 entering. And we have the current I3 also entering. OK, so what do we know here through KCL? We know that I1, which is leaving, has to be equal to everything that is entering, in this case, which is I2 plus I3. OK, this is KCL, basic KCL. Tamam? So the way you're going to analyze this is you're going to look at the current and where it is flowing for each one. So let's look at the current I1 initially. Let me just copy paste this down. And we're going to solve it slowly one by one. So let's look at I1 directly. And then I1, the flow of it is going through a resistor R1. We know the value, but we're going to put the value later on. So we know this value R1. Remember that I is equal to V over R. This is the general form. So for I1, we're going through this resistor, which is um, plus to minus, obviously, this is the way we indicated it. So this resistance is going to be at the bottom, R1. OK, this is we're looking at I1 now. So when it goes through I1, there's going to be a voltage drop from V. And then we don't know what it is, but we know that there's going to be a voltage drop. So it starts with V. V. OK. And then we're going to look at over here, this component right here, the voltage source one. Voltage source one is going from minus to plus. So this is a gain. OK, voltage source one is a gain. So this is going to be plus VS1 was given to be 48 volts. 48 volts plus 48 volts. OK. Plus 48 volts. And then we have our ground here. This is our ground voltage. We have determined this to be our ground. So we have nothing after it. We just have plus zero or minus zero. OK, it doesn't matter because this is our ground voltage. This is V zero equal zero. So this is how we're going to do it. We're always going to start from the node until the next node, which is at the ground level. So V plus 48 volts, which is the gain from this, all right, divided by R1. The same thing again, we're going to be doing for I2 and I3. So again, if we look at I2, where's I2? I2 is starting from here, going all the way up there. So it's starting from zero. We're going to start from this node. It starts from zero, so zero. Plus, it is, why is it plus? Because now, again, this is a voltage gain. VS3 is a voltage gain. We're going from minus to plus, so we are gaining voltage. What is VS3? It is 27 volts. OK, so plus 27. And now we are going to the voltage here. This is going from plus to minus. So this is going to be minus V. When we are going across the resistor, we are going from plus to minus. And then, so the plus part is the 27. The minus part is the V. OK, so we're going to, there's going to be a voltage drop. So it's going to be negative V, all right? Now, again, 
let me move this a bit lower. This is obviously all divided by R2. Now, plus I3, which is going through R34, we know it's going to be divided by R34. But what is going to be at the top? Again, let's go in order. Let's go from the beginning of where the current starts, which is from this node over here, the bottom node. The current starts from zero, so it's going to be zero. Then we are going again. We are going through this resistor, all right? This resistor is where we're going to have a voltage drop, but we're going to have a voltage gain over here from this source. The source is uh, VS2, which is 36 volts. OK, this is 36 volts. We're going from minus to plus, so it is going to be 36 volts gained. But minus the voltage that we are reaching over here, so minus the voltage over here because we are gaining 36 volts, but we're losing this voltage over here due to the resistance. OK, all over R3, 4. And this is going to be your equation to find your voltage V. Very simply done. So if we simplify this, we are going to get V. Over R1, R1 is 5000 plus 48 over 5000 minus 0 over 5000 which is just the 0 and then this is equal to 0 plus 27 is just 27 over r2 r2 was 16000 okay and minus v so minus over here v over R2 again, which is 16,000. I'm just breaking them down. I'm just separating each entity by itself from now. Plus, let me move this a bit to the side. Plus, 0 plus 36 is just 36 over R34. R34. R34 is, we can find it instantly from here. R34 is equal to R3 plus R4, which is equal to 5 kilo ohms plus 27 kilo ohms. So R34 is equal to 32 kilo ohms. OK. Now. Plus 36 over R34, which was 32 kilo ohms. The reason I'm putting thousands is because this is all in kilo ohms. So one kilo ohm is equal to 1000 ohms, and we have to make sure everything is in ohms. Minus. Again, V. Over. 32,000 ohms. Now, we have found uh, V over, we have separated everything. Now we have to group up the Vs. So let's take all the Vs to the left side. So V over 5,000. This is minus over here, so it's going to be plus, plus on the other side. So it's over V over 16,000. Plus, again, this is negative on the right, so it's going to be positive on the left. V over 32,000. All right. Is equal to, let's take the 48 over 5,000 to the other side. So we have 27 first over 16,000. Plus 36 over 32,000. Minus 48 over 5,000. This might, this is negative because it was positive on the other side. To simplify this, we take the V out as common. We're going to be remaining with 1 over 5,000 plus 1 over 16,000 plus 1 over 32,000 is equal to, let's simplify the right side directly. So it's 27 over 16,000 plus 36 over 32,000 minus 48 over 5,000, and we get negative 543 over 80,000, OK? Let's simplify the right side, uh, the left side now in the brackets as well. This is going to be uh, 1 over 5,000 plus 1 over 16,000 plus 1 over 32,000. So this is going to be 47 over 
160,000 equal to negative 543 over 80,000. Uh, a little bit of algebra here. We're just going to move this to the other side. So it's minus 543 over 80,000 times 160,000 over 47. We just flip it and multiply it on the each side. So voltage is going to be equal to minus 543 over 80,000 times 543. 80,000 times one six okay. We're going to get to negative 23, or let's put it in fraction first, it is negative 1086 over 47, which is equal to negative 23.106 volts. All right, this is how you would solve with the voltage. So uh, the question wants us to determine the currents through all the resistances. How are we going to do that? So now we just go back to the main equation. I1 is going to be equal to, if you look at I1, I1 is equal to uh, one minute. Hey, what am I doing? I1. Over here. This is our I1, remember? This is our I1. This is our I2. And this is our I3. And then, so we have our I1, our I2, and our I3. I1 is V plus 48. So it is equal to minus 23.106 plus 48 over 5,000. Remember, we're just applying this equation now to it. So it's V plus 48 over R1. So V is minus 23.106 plus 48 over 5,000. This is going to be equal to minus 23.48 divided by 5,000. We're going to get 4.979 uh, times 10 to the minus 3 amps, or we could say this is 4.979 milliamps. It's the same thing. This is I1. We do the exact same thing again for I2. I2 is going to be equal to this equation over here, which is 27 minus V over R2. 27 minus V. What is our V again? It's negative 23.106. Make sure we have minus and then we have the negative for the V itself. Don't make a mistake over there. Divided by R2, R2 was 16,000. So this is equal to um, divide by four. So, so this is negative and negative. It will become plus. So 27 plus. Uh, 23.106 divided by 1600. We're going to get 3.132 times 10 to the negative 3 amperes, which is equal to 3.132 milliamperes. Okay. And last but not least, we have I3, which is equal to 36 minus V. All right. So 36 minus v again we already have found v it's negative 23.106 all over r uh 3 r23 or r34 sorry which is 3200 so 3200 or 32000 sorry so it's equal to again this is minus and minus it will become plus Uh, it's going to become plus, so 36 plus 23.106 divided by 32,000. I get 1.847 times 10 to the minus 3 appears, or in other words, 1.847 milliampers. And that's how you find the current through all of it. All right. I hope that this was a clear. This is basically how you will be doing nodal analysis most of the time.